All right, so today I'm gonna to teach you basically everything that I've learned about how to set up a small fireworks show. This advice is kind of gonna be applicable to very small shows um, all the way up to very large shows. You'll see uh, professional um, fireworks shooters who shoot 1.3 and all those big kinds of things. Uh, oftentimes we'll do this very same sort of, I don't know if you call it a trick, but it's just the method that I have found works really great for setting up a fireworks show. Without any further ado, let me show you the way that I would set up any sort of fireworks show. I'll, I do this if I'm just sh shooting off maybe three things or like the full 4th of July show. It's the same sort of idea. Right here I've just got a bundle of different fireworks that you could possibly have. Um, some small stuff and then some larger um, items. If these fireworks here don't really apply to you, you can just take the advice that I'm giving and then translate it over to your fireworks. So first off, what I would do is order the fireworks from basically the smallest to the largest. Now, this is not necessarily going to mean the start of the show to the end of the show, but typically uh, you want your show to progress and get larger. Um, so that's basically what we're gonna do, and then I'm gonna tell you some changes that we're gonna have to the opening and end. So first off, this is not what I would put um, in your fireworks show at night. It doesn't really work with the other things. It's a parachute um, fireworks. So this, I would actually save for like the daytime before, or if your show is during the day, this would be perfect. But this theoretical show that I'm setting up would happen at night. So I'm gonna put the parachute um, aside because this would go during the daytime. All right, so now if we go smallest to largest, the novelty items are gonna go first. And then all of the fountains we're gonna put second. So this is um, a little bit larger fountain. I know there are some uh, even smaller ones. You know, there's, there's stuff in here, but this is just theoretical. So you're gonna have novelty fountains. This is a 500 gram fountain cake right here. We'll have that go there. Then, I would say the Roman candles probably go somewhere in here. This uh, Saturn missile rocket probably goes here. Then we've got our uh, Black Cat Pound rocket will maybe go next. Uh, motor tubes are just here to represent uh, the shells. Uh, you could either have full racks or just place these in one by one. Um, whatever you wherever you're at right now. So this one here is for ball shells This here is the meet mr. Big hamster shells do a video on those and then here. We've got a uh, 200 gram cake. I think it's 20 shots right there We'll get to all of the paperwork and other stuff in a minute right now We're just classifying which fireworks we're gonna have go first and last and stuff like that because that is very important to know so for the most part this is what I believe kind of creates the best show you start with the small ones we're gonna talk about a good um, intro part in a second but you start with the small ones kind of go through fountains if your state only allows fountains then you know this is a great finale this lasts like five minutes um, so this would be a great show right here starting from here moving up to there if you have these 1.4 items and your state either allows it or you have it and you want to use it then we'll move to this so like roman candles smaller bigger center missile rockets and then mortars and then cakes. It's pretty difficult to tell which one of these would be the biggest. Um, I would probably say uh, a large cake like this would be a great finale. Or if you have a huge mortar rack and you quick fuse the whole thing, that would also be an amazing finale. Something over here is great for a finale that's very fast and very large, typically. Alright, so let's look at what would be a pretty good introduction to your show. Um, typically a rocket would be nice, um, something sort of loud to start off the show, you know, a big strip of firecrackers, get everybody's attention, something that shoots way high like this and far. Um, this would be a good thing to start. I do uh, tend to have in a 
larger show like this, not when it's just a couple of items, but when it's larger like this, the first item or two will be sort of from the middle section of the show, and then it'll go to the start with like a smoke canister, or tank, or fountain, or, and then kind of move up again. You don't need to have this, but I like at the start of the show, um, a nice sort of wow people, so they know you really mean business here. So now we've basically picked the uh, entire show line, what goes after which. Um, then we're going to move to the paperwork. Yours will possibly be smaller than this. Um, my full 4th of July thing will definitely be larger this, than this with all the racks and the cakes and all the other stuff. Um, so your, your setting up of the order may take a lot more time but you really want to perfect this because if your order is off, then your audience will sometimes get confused. And I found this is really the most logical way to do stuff. Um, it's kind of what your audience will be expecting for the most part um, because, you know, the professional display things have, you know, like some salutes for the opener and then some uh, cakes and 1.4 stuff and then some larger 1.3 stuff and then some the finale, which you know the finale in basically every single professional show is amazing. So let's now switch over to the paperwork and I'll show you um, at least what I do before a show, um, before you set everything up and it makes your whole process much more streamlined and then the outcome is more organized. All right, so besides your fireworks, um, there's a couple of things I would suggest you really need if you want your show to be professional. So that would be um, some sort of a firing system. It can be a small, cheap sort of firing system like this, or something like a Cobra, or whatever sort of thing you have if you want your show to be really awesome, uh, and you want to watch your show with your audience, then I would suggest possibly picking up a small firing system like this. It definitely makes your show more streamlined and more enjoyable, at least for you, because you get to watch it and not have to light the fireworks yourself. For this tutorial, a firing system is not necessary because you can hand light all this stuff. It just streamlines the process and this sort of allows you to do all of the work beforehand and set everything up. And then all you have to do is read from your little piece of paper and press cues and everything goes smoothly, hopefully. Along with the firing system, you're gonna need either some of these uh, Falcon 2 igniters or some sort of igniter like this. Uh, if you have access to e-match, that is also awesome. These two really go together because you need this stuff to go with this. So I've got this little TNT fireworks notebook here for our theoretical show of the order. That way you know what when you're pressing a cue, which firework that is or which group of fireworks that will light off. Typically, I'll write sort of the number that the firework is and then put it somewhere so somebody knows uh, what the order is. If you're using more than one firing system, then you'll do like the module or the queue or whatever, whatever channel it's on. Um, so then this can get very complex. Um, and then if you have more people working with you, they know exactly which firework plugs into which queue. So I'll write like one, two, three. So then on your firework over here, you put Hopefully it's larger so you can see it, but then you put number three on item number three, one, two. So you have all of them labeled. Um, this is just tape, so you, if you change your mind later, you can um, switch them from cakes, but then you also want to switch it in your master booklet. So the main pyrotechnical dude, chief lighter person, whatever you want to call it, um, the chief person, this could be you, this could be somebody else, um, should have some sort of notebook um, where they have the list of all the fireworks, what order, if you have music, the song choice can go along in here. Um, but it's basically gonna have the number of the queue, module, channel, whatever. Um, and then the firework, if you want, you can put the uh, time you believe it will, the duration it'll last, um, and then some other notes. So we're just gonna write here, you may wanna put a title, so we'll put the show, and then your date, whatever, if you want to keep this for later, for reference. Then we'll put one is the Black Cat Pound Rocket. We'll say that it'll last three seconds. You don't have to do this time here, but it can help you uh, tell when you want to do the next cue. Uh, two is smoke. 
we'll say that's that it's probably like a minute so then you list all of the fireworks um more than one page and then the head person who's firing then looks at this or either a copy of this you can do this you can print this out ahead of time if you want if you really know your order you can print it out and then send a copy to each person who is setting up your show so then the person who is push so then the person who's pressing the cues goes through the order looks at the time um, and then sort of just goes down the order the reason you want to make sure that you know sort of what cues you're pressing instead of just randomly pressing 1 through 12 is because then if something doesn't work then you can tell okay this thing didn't work we can try to come back later and try that again if we want or say you created this display this order um, and then somebody else is firing it and they didn't expect you to have black cat pound rocket to start with because they were expecting a smoke canister then they know this is what they're expecting and nobody is surprised let's make sure everybody is on the same page oh the other important thing that i wanted to mention is when you're getting to these larger fireworks um even like the smoke canister but these create a lot of smoke and if it's not a terribly windy night and there's uh, either just a slight breeze or no breeze at all the smoke is going to sit there and sit there and if nothing is moving it away it's just going to sit there and if you get so much smoke um, from all your shells or whatnot you're eventually not going to be able to see the actual firework at all so that's something you want to list like a five minute break to let the smoke clear um, this intermission sort of thing it could be an intermission it could just be whatever you want um that's a fun time to put in some sparklers or other things that the family or friends or you know show goers can participate in um, it's really fun to incorporate the audience and have a hands-on experience instead of just watching it all come in I think that's about all I have to say about setting up a show. If you wanted to on like a cover like this, you could put a key um, for what your abbreviations mean or other important information that you will read or somebody else will read when they're firing it. If you have a mixture of electronic firing and people hand lighting, it's probably a good idea to have some sort of a walkie talkie so you can talk to them and tell them, this is what I want to do at this time or you know it's we're gonna skip this part and jump over here um that is just fine to do nobody's really going to tell if you skip the order and come back to something um it just always makes sense to s basically go from the smallest to the biggest with a mildly large thing to start with and your biggest baddest finale that you can possibly do once again, this is relatable to any sort of fireworks show that you're doing. Um, it doesn't matter if you're just doing three items or a full display of things. You can use these tips and make your show the best possible. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check out the 4th of July show that will be coming up in a couple days after the 4th of July. As soon as that gets edited and all the madness that occurs on the 4th of July sort of calms down you'll be able to see a good example of this idea that it starts with a nice intro, then works its way up to the finale. Make sure if I forgot anything that you think is important about either your firing system or listing stuff, communicating with other people, make sure to leave that in the comments below um, because I could have forgotten something. But this is really just what I believe creates a great show and then you, if you have a firing system, you can set everything up beforehand and then just press buttons when your time for the show. You get to sit back and watch with your audience. See you on the floor.